So this game has been in development for eight freaking years. That was since 2012, which is the most ridiculous probably thing I've ever heard for a game to take this long to complete. And over that time, this game has garnered a whole bunch of love and hate and all that and an insane amount of hype. So has the wait been worth it? Is it worth the hype? In my personal opinion, no. But it got pretty damn close. <laughs> So if you do not know what this game is all about, uh, basically it's a uh, choice-based RPG open world action game. I think that's it. I don't know, it's kind of weird to explain, but um, anyway, let me explain the story. Basically you play as V, this uh, mercenary who gets almost kind of shot in the face and almost dies, but surprise, surprise, he survives because a game has to happen. And then suddenly he has the voice of Keanu Reeves in the back of his head, because why the hell not? You know, Keanu Reeves is the best boy, so why the hell not? And I won't spoil the whole story because, uh, one, that's kind of a dick move, and two, because that's kind of impossible to do because choices actually matter in this game. I know, it's a, it's a wild concept. So let me start off with saying that um, you can customize V however you want because it's a char character creation, so each V should be kind of different. But, um, I found this point kind of stupid because, uh, on the one hand, yeah, you get to look however you want. On the other hand, you play in, in first person, so what the hell is even the point of having a character creation if you're just gonna play in first person the whole time? I mean, you do get to see your character model sometimes. But for like 99% of the whole game, you're playing in first person, so what the hell was even the point? Now, I'm making it sound like I'm harping on the game, and I am not. Because this game, for the most part, is amazing. I'm blown away by this game. Visually, uh, it is just freaking spectacular. I couldn't, like, be happier. Um, I don't really know how the, well this game will run on the uh, consoles, because I played it on PC, because... You know, consoles aren't allowed for some reason, which was weird, but, you know, it's a thing. But um, trust me, guys, this game is beautiful beyond belief, especially the aesthetics of the city, especially at night. At night, this game looks like mwah, chef's kiss, like, I swear. It gives off this, like, 80s futuristic vibe, which I really, really love. I really appreciate that. And honestly... If this game, Games World, wasn't so was so shitty, I would honestly like to live here. But, you know, it is shitty, so too bad. But enough about the aesthetic. Let's talk about the gameplay. And uh, I noticed that there are four types of gameplay in uh, the game. There's shooting, melee, hacking, and uh, basically dialogue options and stuff like that. So the gun shooting, I noticed, is actually really well done. Um, you know, you get guns and stuff, and, uh, you know, you can uh, customize your guns. Each gun is different. Each bullet can have a different effect. Like, you can shoot somebody, and you can, like, track them, and different bullets can, like, shoot through walls, stuff like that. You know, gunplay is actually really solid. I actually really enjoy it. However, I noticed that some enemies can be bullet sponges, so that's kind of a meh kind of it's kind of a mood point but you know gunplay feels amazing to use like let's just go with that uh right now uh, the melee the melee is also pretty good and uh in this game you could just straight up pick up a katana pretend you're a ninja and just go slashing people right in the face and uh nobody can stop you although i can say i can't say that uh using the sword in the beginning can be a little bit difficult, but, you know, if you put more perks into it, it's gonna become smooth like butter, baby. So now let's get into the hacking. So the hacking, I didn't really use as much because it wasn't really a required thing to do, if that makes any sense. Uh, basically, the hacking is fun, though, I'm not gonna lie. So basically, every single person in uh, the future of 2077 is kind of cybernetic in some way or another. So basically what you can do 
is a hack into not only the environment, but into people as well. So uh, if you use hacking, you can just kind of slow down time and uh, you can control the environment because, you know, everything's electronic. And then you can also, you know, blind your enemies and turn off their eyes because why the hell not? Because cybernetics and stuff. And that is really fun to use, but it's not integral, if that makes any sense. So I mentioned earlier that this game was an RPG. That's because it is. Uh, you get, you know, skill trees because every game nowadays needs one. And uh, you could, uh, as you progress through the game, doing whatever it is you need to do, you get points. And then you use those points to put into skills and onto which build that you want to play as. Do you want to play stealthily? Do you want to go in guns blazing? Do you want to, like, try something else? Do you want to do melee only? You could put your skills into that and that's how you can play. It's, it's a different build. You could customize it however you want. And I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, game. And I really want to talk about the city itself, Night City, because the city itself almost feels like a character in itself. You go in there and everything feels lived in. It feels alive. Even if you're not there, it feels like the city is still churning. Everything is keeps going, you know? You're not the center. You're just a piece of the puzzle. And especially the NPCs, because the NPCs are really, like, entertaining and stuff. And, um... Depending on what you do, you can impact, like, the NPCs in different ways. And I know I haven't mentioned this, but this game is beautiful, and especially the city, because the city feels lived in, and it feels beautiful, but also run down and kind of crappy. And uh, that is just probably the best part. And uh, the NPCs, right, I mentioned that. So probably the best thing about this game are actually the side quests if, <laughs> if you can believe it because the side quests the more you do them the more it impacts the story and um, you can talk to a character right and depending on what you tell him he can show up at the end of the game or he can just not show up at all it all depends on what you do in these side missions the side missions are very important and they should not be overlooked and what I like about this the most is the fact that what you do in the side missions actually impacts the main story and can change the ending which i found like freaking phenomenal because and i and i shouldn't because at this point i think that that should be probably an implementation that all games should have but for some reason they don't and this game does and i really appreciate that and this game is huge night city is huge i'm not saying that as a buzzword i'm saying that because it's true the city is massive and it'll probably take you multiple playthroughs just to like see everything and i do suggest multiple playthroughs because depending on what you say and what you do the ending can be different entirely so you know get on that but now i kind of want to talk about the things that i found problems with because this is not a perfect game it's close but it's not there yet and uh, I want to talk about Keanu Reeves for a second, because Keanu Reeves is best boy. However, his performance is a bit sus. So, uh, Keanu Reeves plays this character called Johnny, who used to be like a superstar or something like that. And uh, he died like 50 years ago, but he still wants revenge. So he basically uh, goes into your head and he's just like, yo, go commit terrorism and stuff. And honestly, I kind of found... I don't want to say Keanu phoned it in, but out of all the characters, he does feel like, um, not that he was miscast, but that he was, you know, yeah, he was probably miscast. That was it because, uh, Johnny is not, is kind of like a gruff and tough, kind of like a, you know, type of like dude, but, uh, Keanu is not that Keanu's best boy and, uh, his performance felt really off to me. Everybody else, however, um, everybody else was fine, to be honest. Um, now, uh, let's get into gameplay. Gameplay-wise, everything is mostly fine, except for the driving. The driving is ass in this game. I don't know what <laughs> what is up with the driving, but uh, <sighs> it is really annoying to drive. 
it feels like especially when you're trying to do a sharp turn like good luck with that because <laughs> it is <laughs> driving this game is difficult okay it is not good and uh it shouldn't really be that you guys should probably get on that and fix it so what i also found to be completely like useless was crafting crafting in this game i don't know maybe i played it wrong or something but i found it completely useless because to create something you need to collect materials which are freaking everywhere but as soon as you start to create stuff um you find something better on the ground just laying there so what is even the point of crafting at that point you get what i mean crafting just feels like a thing that you can do but that you probably shouldn't like it's there if you want to but it's not required and it's not helpful in any way or at least it wasn't to me and uh, finally, let us talk about the glitches because hot damn, there's a lot of glitches. <laughs> Most of them I found to be cosmetic. What I mean is just like, you know, characters like clipping through, people like guns floating and stuff like that. So I found most of them to be cosmetic. My game, my game did crash a couple times, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. However, I did notice that in some missions like in certain side missions that um, I would try to complete a level but then the game would glitch and then I couldn't continue so I had to restart and that was irritating as hell I'm not gonna lie um, but I think that these glitches can be fixed pretty easily so I mean I don't know what I'm saying is this game I feel is unpolished and maybe unfinished because glitches be galore but I do hope that, you know, patches do come through and it's not just, you know, a recurring issue. And it probably won't be because these guys have been really good, especially with like the Witcher and stuff. But yeah, um, do I recommend that you buy this game? Absolutely, freaking lootly This game is beautiful. And the soundtrack, I didn't even talk about soundtracks. Soundtrack is uh, chef's kiss. I'll go buy it on vinyl, but I'm not sure that that's coming out. Anyway, so do I recommend that you buy it? Yes, absolutely buy it. Um, do you buy it now? Uh, maybe. Unless glitches really bother you, then maybe don't. I'll maybe wait a couple months so maybe they have a chance to fix the issues that I have problems with. But, you know, maybe they're just not gonna. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. I would say if you really, really want to play this game, play it now. Get a full price. You'll probably love it. However, if you have problems with, like glitches and stuff like that, wait a couple months. It'll be fine then. Game is pretty awesome regardless. But yeah. Also, um, I don't know how well this game is going to run on PS4 and all of that. Because it hasn't come out yet. Uh, when I'm recording this. So, um, if it's ass on PS4, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, for now, on PC, it's pretty good. Anyway, guys. Uh, that's it for me. Goodbye.